Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for the May Indiana Horse Racing Commission meeting. My name is Megan Arsman, and it's currently 1.20. We apologize for the late start. Um, as always, there's just always a little bit of technical difficulties, but we appreciate you sticking with us. <clears throat> And joining us, we have on, this is going to be our first uh, commi virtual commission meeting. So you will see everybody speaking and you will see the agenda items as they come up. Of course, we have our executive director, Ms. Dina Pittman. We have chairman of the Indiana Ra Horse Racing Commission, um, Dr. Philip Borst. And then our commission members, Mr. Greg Schinkel, Mr. George Pillow, and Mr. Bill McCarty. And so I am going to go ahead and give it up to Dr. Borst for him to kickstart the meeting. Thank you. Um, I absolutely apologize to everybody. This is all my fault. And I guess veterinarians are just not very technically oriented because uh, I thought I could do this and did it the other day, but I apologize that I couldn't couldn't get on. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and swear in our recorder, Robin Marks. Robin, are you there? I'm I'm here, and I've got my hand raised. Okay, well, good. I believe you. Do you, Robin Marks, swear or affirm that you are qualified to act as the official reporter for the Indiana Horse Racing Commission, and that you will prepare and certify a true, correct transcript of the scheduled proceedings? I will. Thank you. Okay, in that case, I'll call us to order. Um, again, the, th this is this is history. Uh, obviously, the first time we've ever had a virtual meeting, and um, there may be some bugs as there already has been, but we'll try to make this as efficient as we can. And I just welcome everybody who's listening and who's watching. It's not ideal, obviously, to have a public meeting this way, but most all the items that are on the agenda have been vetted by those who have been affected and they've checked off on it. So hopefully we don't have anything controversial. Um, so at this point then we will, I'll ask for approval of the memorandum from the December 3rd meeting. I would move approval. Um, and then I want to make a comment after, after that, if we can, please. I second. I'll second. Okay. And moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Mr. Chairman, can we, excuse oh, me, I'm sorry, call. we'll need to do a roll call vote because everybody's on virtually. You're right, roll call. Um, we had the motion in the second. Uh, Chairman Borst? Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel? Aye. Commissioner Pillow? Aye. Commissioner McCarty? Aye. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Schenkel has a comment. I just wanted to make sure that we uh, got it in the minutes of this meeting, because at that, if you recall, at that meeting in December, we gave conditional approval to the operating plans, and I wanted to make sure that we duly note in the minutes that um, those conditions were met and full approval was granted. So I wanted to make sure Correct. that that conditional approval was. It was recognized that 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 was followed through on and, and everything was met. Well, and it will be too because uh, item number four covers that. Yeah. So we'll okay, go. thanks. Okay, let's move on to consideration of settlement agreement between Indiana Horse Racing Commission staff and Brent <coughs> R. Wendling. Noah, do you want to take that? Yes, thank you. Commissioners, you have in your packet the settlement agreement that was fully executed in January 2020 between Commission staff and Brent R. Windling. Mr. Windling was allowed on the backside to drop off a horse he was going to race. IHRC investigators searched Mr. Windling's vehicle on or about August 24, 2019. Based on reasonable suspicion, they also conducted a saliva sample from Mr. Wendling and collected it and sent, for, sent it for analysis, which returned positive for THC. The stewards summarily suspended Mr. Wendling and stewards ruling IG 2019-1850. On September 5th, 2019, an exclusion order was issued to Mr. Wendling, which Mr. Wendling timely contested. The matter was assigned to Administrative Law Judge Bernard L. Pilot, 
and the stewards lifted the summary suspension on or about September 5th, 2019. Mr. Windling, by counsel, asked to pursue a settlement agreement on or about September 27, 2019. Mr. Windling has agreed to pay a $1,000 fine and has agreed to be suspended from August of 20, August 24th, 2019 through and including April 28th, 2020. In addition, Mr. Windling must submit to a drug test and provide a negative drug test result before he is eligible to apply for a license. At this time, Commission staff would request uh, approval of the settlement agreement, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Does anyone have any questions uh, for Noah on the case? If not, anybody have a motion and a second? I move for approval of the settlement agreement as presented. I second. Been moved and seconded. We'll now have a roll call vote. Thank you. Chairman Borst? Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel? Aye. Commissioner Pillow? Aye. And Commissioner McCarty? Aye. Thank you. Okay, the next we'll go to consideration of the following proposed emergency rule changes. And I think what we'll do is let Noah present them and then we'll just vote on them all at one time, I think, for efficiency's sake here, unless somebody Thank wants one pulled out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, all of the rules will be submitted to the Legislative Services Agency on one document as included in your meeting books. Commission staff's intent is to review each category separately, then hold a single vote if no rule needs to be modified or removed from the list. The categories are standard bred, thoroughbred and quarter horse, and all breeds. First, the standard bred rules. All of the rules were sent to the stakeholders. None of the stakeholders have raised any issue with the updated rules. The updates are a combination of requests from various stakeholders and rule housekeeping. Five rules will be amended as shown in the emergency rule document that will be filed with the Legislative Services Agency upon your approval. Next, the thoroughbred and quarter horse rules. All of these rules were also sent to stakeholders. The updates are a combination of requests from various stakeholders and rule housekeeping. Eight rules will be amended as shown in the emergency rule document that will be filed with Legislative Services Agency upon your approval. And finally, the all breed rules for all breeds. All of the rules were sent to the stakeholders and the updates are a combination of requests from various stakeholders and rule housekeeping. Three rules will be amended as shown in the emergency rule document that will be filed with legislative services upon your approval. Okay, do any commission members have any questions about any of the particular rules? All right, hearing none, do we have a motion and a second? I would move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded. Okay, roll call vote. Thank you. Chairman Borst? Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel? Aye. Commissioner Pillow? Aye. And Commissioner McCarty? Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Passed four to nothing. Uh, next on the agenda is the approval of Caesar's proof of financial responsibility. Noah again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, you were provided Caesar's proof of financial Ooh. responsibility as a confidential attachment in your meeting books. If the offered proof is acceptable, we need a motion to approve Caesar's proof of financial responsibility as submitted. have such a motion. So moved. A second. Been moved and seconded. Any further comment? It's confidential material, so. All right, Nick, roll call vote. Chairman Borst. Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel. Sorry, aye. Commissioner Pillow. Aye. And Commissioner McCarty. Aye. Thank you. Good. It passes also. 
Next on our agenda are the presentation of the amended Thoroughbred Breed Development Advisory Committee, uh, the amended Quarter Horse Breed Development Advisory Committee, <coughs> and the amended Standard Bred Breed Development Advisory Committee. Uh, Jessica has worked hard on this. I don't know how you do these numbers. You have to have a mathematical degree from Purdue or something to do this because it's amazing. And we thank you for your hard work and especially new committee members. And we thank the committee members. So Jessica, if you want to take these three. You're Maybe. muted, Jessica. <laughs> I, I was the one reminding everybody to unmute themselves and I didn't unmute myself. Um, the, the first is the um, Thoroughbred Breed Development Program. You know, as we started this year, we were all excited because we were going to have added revenues from, from table games. And there was a lot of different elements that we were going to implement into the program. And every, everything was, was sunshines and roses. And um, COVID-19 hit and put the brakes on, on everything. So, so what we've had to do is basically go back and revamp the programs and try to figure out what could what could we keep that we were already implementing, um, what could we change, and, and how could we make these programs be the best that they could be in the situation that we're in. So so that's what we've did. Um, you know, we went to, from originally we had about a fourteen million dollar budget to um to quite a bit less than that for for 2020 so what i've outlined in this document is what we were able to keep from the program um, this program keeps the thoroughbred stakes intact so it doesn't delete any of the thoroughbred stakes um, it does reduce the purses of those in order to keep those so it, it does um, it, it does um, reduce those purses. It also keeps, um, we are able to keep the purses for Indiana bred overnights and at 2019 levels. So I think that's a real accomplishment that we were able to do. And I can tell you that we would not been, have been able to do those things without the support of the horsemen um, and the racetracks, especially. The racetracks actually came in and, and boosted their um, money that they put into the overnight program for us. Um, they actually boosted that by $300 a race. Um, and we know that this is a one-time thing for this year, um, but we're appreciative of that because it's a, it's a big puzzle to get all of these all of these things put together. So, um, and we were also able to keep um, the sired races that we added into the program this year, um, even though we don't have the money that we anticipated having, we do still have a statutory mandate that 41% of the program be allocated to the sired portion of our program. So we had to try to meet that as well, even though we didn't have new revenue because that statute didn't change, even though our revenues change. So what we have outlined here is, is all of those things. I think it's still gonna be a very nice program. I am hopeful that maybe our projections are a little low and if things open up, and are much higher than, than we anticipate, then you know I'll be calling a meeting of my thoroughbred breed development um, committee members and the racetracks and, and maybe we'll be coming back to you in a couple months and adding some things. But I think what we've put here is very workable um, and it still leaves us some reserves in our funds for the breed development program. Um, I'm very thankful we had those reserves um, because the program would look a lot different if we didn't have some reserves in our funds. So I just respect Effectively, um, you know, ask for, for your approval of the Thoroughbred Breed Development Program, and I would be happy to answer any questions on it. Thank you. Again, thank you for the hard work. Gosh, that was a heck of a puzzle to put together. It was. Any commission members have any questions on any of the three programs? Do you want me to, Commissioner Chairman Boris, do you want me to go ahead and do all three of the programs or do you want to take them separately? Because I can talk uh, about the other no, three we'll too. Go. However you want to do it. Okay, I just talked about the thoroughbred. So if you want to take it, then I'll briefly touch on the quarter horse and standard bread separately after that. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll, if there's no further comments, we'll ask for a motion and a second then on the thoroughbred program. Do 
Do we have a motion or a second? I move for approval of the thoroughbred program, Mr. Sinis. And I'll I will second was, it. I, okay. Good. Okay, roll call vote. Thank you. Chairman Boris? Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel? Aye. Commissioner Pillow? Aye. And Commissioner McCarty? Aye. Great. Passes unanimously. Okay, let's go on to the quarter horse. Okay. The quarter horse breed development program was really in a really great shape, um, even with our revenue losses. Um, and, and that is because the quarter horse funding is probably, it is receives a majority of the funding for their program from the purse account. So, so their split is a, is a lot different than the, the thoroughbred and the standard breads because they don't get as much money into the quarter horse breed development program. And we were fortunate that the purse account had um, quite a bit of money in reserves for the quarter horse program. And so they were, they worked with us in the entire program as a whole. So when you look at this proposal, there are things that we've had to cut that we had planned on doing this year, but we were able to keep purses actually above where they were for 2019. Um, we were able to increase the trials um, that we had put in our original program for 2020. And we were able to increase um, part of the awards on open races. We weren't able to increase the awards on open stakes, but we were for open overnights. So, I mean, I think th the program that we have out here for the quarter horses this year is actually a more attractive program than we had for 2019, um, which I, I think everybody in the quarter horse industry is very grateful to. Um, and we're very thankful for that cooperation from the racetrack and from from the QH, QHRAI in making this program work. So I would be happy to ask any questions um, that you guys may have, and then I would respectfully ask for approval of this program. Any commission members have a question for Jessica? Hearing none, we'll take a motion in a second. I would move approval. And I second. Been moved and seconded. The roll call vote. Thank you. Chairman Boris? Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel? Aye. Commissioner Pillow? Aye. And Commissioner McCarty? Aye. Thank you. Great. Unanimously. <clears throat> okay, Jessica, next. Okay. Um, we have the Standard Bread Breed Development Program. And, um, you know, same situation. We were excited to do a lot of new things this year, um, but we're facing reduced funding also. Um, you know, this approach to the program is a little bit different than the thoroughbred and quarter horse because the standard bred breed development program is primarily self funded through the breed development. So, what we basically did is we looked at what funds we had available, we utilized some funds from reserves. And then we calculated what that reduction was for the program. And we actually went through and applied that reduction ac across the board. So we were able to keep the, the board members felt that it was very important that we keep our sire six programs primarily intact. Um, and we just applied the funds. So you're going to see some reduced funding for the legs for those. Um, the late closers, we did actually uh, eliminate some late closers, but we moved that funding over to the overnight program. So you'll still see those late clo closers take place, but they will actually take place without horsemen having to pay out money to nominate to them. So they thought that would be easier for the horsemen to write those events as overnight races and kind of take some of that um, pressure off of the horseman's pocketbook in doing it. Um, the fair circuit program, the fairs are not allowed to start under the governor's um, back on track Indiana plan until July 4th. So that has drastically, it has modified our, our fair program quite a bit. So we looked and we went from a two series fair program to a one series fair program with the final being held at the Indiana State Fair um, in September. So what I've laid out to you is, is the changes we made to all of these programs. Um, I still think we've got a really great program 
And, you know, we appreciate all the horsemen's groups, the ISA and the racetrack working together with breed development to get these things done. So I would be happy to have answer any specific questions you have on the program. And if not, I would respectfully ask for your approval of the standard bred free development program. Jessica, I Great. will Greg Schenkel. I'll, I'll move approval. Um, and then once we got a second, I have a question for you. Okay. I second the, uh, this is Commissioner McCarty. I second. Okay, uh, comment? My, yeah, my comment, I guess, is more than a question. You, you mentioned in that that because of the unique nature of things this year, you have utilized reserves. I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that we point out that you have not depleted the reserves. No. You've, you've, you've utilized some of the reserves, but there are still reser adequate reserves uh, prepared there. Right. Yes. Yes, we have the thoroughbred breed development program should have an ending balance of about 1.8 million at the end of the year. So that gives us a really good cushion. Um, standard bread breed development, their balance is going to be about three million dollars at the end of the year. Um, and then the quarter horse um, breed development program, their balance ending balance is about 400,000. So we've kept those all proportional. So if, if the casinos don't open when we think they will, if our numbers are lower, then we feel really comfortable with what we have there. So I just want to make sure people understood we weren't spending every penny. Yes, yes. And still maintaining some reserve. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing to have reserves. That's what this this day and age, that's what reserves are for, and we'll build them back up. Mm -hmm. Any other commissioner questions? If not, uh, I guess we'll do our roll call vote. Thank you. Chairman Borst? Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel? Aye. Commissioner Pillow? Aye. And Commissioner McCarty? Aye. Thank you. Great. Um, Mr. Actually, Chairman, I apologize if, if I could interrupt real quick. I, we, I think we inadvertently skipped agenda item four. Um, there's not going to need to be a vote, but I wanted to just get on the uh, record kind of what happened with that situation with the operational plans. Oh, I guess I did, didn't I? After I after Commissioner Schenkel mentioned it. Okay, that's, pro that's probably because I screwed it up by getting out of order. Early. Sorry. <laughs> um, so again, there, there's no vote, but I wanted to kind of run down what what happened. So Caesar submitted its 2020 operational plans at the December 3rd, 2019 commission meeting. Due to certain deficiencies, Caesars was given conditional approval of the operational plans and required to update the plans by December 31st, 2019. And Executive Director Pittman was delegated the authority to approve the updated 2020 operational plans. Executive Director Pittman approved the Caesars updated plans uh, in a letter dated January 13th, 2020, included in your agenda item for materials for consideration. There is no vote on this agenda item as the authority for approval was delegated to Executive Director Pittman. However, in order to tie up loose ends, this agenda item was added to explain what happened following the December 3rd, 2019 commission meeting. Delegation of the authority to Executive Director Pittman, her approval of the plans, followed by the approval of the December 3rd, 2019 meeting memorandum should conclude this matter. Great. All right. Thank you. Thanks for catching that. OK, next on the agenda. Um, number nine, approval of Indiana Grand's 2020 thoroughbred and quarter horse racing official list pursuant to IC code. Um, Noah, do you want to take that? Yes, thank you. Commissioners, you have before you Hoosier Park's 2020 list of racing officials for approval. In addition to its recommendation that you approve the list, Commission staff respectfully requests that you grant the Executive Director the authority to approve any changes to the list that occurred during the 2020 race meet. Great. Any uh, questions on the list at all, Commission members? If not, we'll take a uh, motion and second. Move approval of these officials. And Commissioner Party seconds the motion. 
Great. Motion and a second. Roll call vote. And, and excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I just, could we also move approval of Executive Director Pittman's authority to approve changes? Yes. Thank you. So amend my motion. Thank you. Great. All right. Roll call vote. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Borst. Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel. Aye. Commissioner Pillow. Aye. And Commissioner McCarty. Aye. Thank you. It passes. Well, if this had been live, what we were going to try to do is introduce our new uh, Indiana VP and general manager, Eric Hallstrom, coming back to Indiana. Took a while, but he's on his, his way back. Uh, so welcome. Uh, usually we do things better than this and we'll get better, but it's the times. <laughs> I don't know, is, is Eric, are you on this? Uh, yes. Great. Would you like to say a word or two? Sure, and thank you, Chairman Borth. And let, to echo your point, I, I was sure hoping that the first time I got to speak to everybody that it would be under different circumstances and we'll just move that down the road and looking forward to you know sometime this summer hopefully where everybody's able to get out uh, and uh, see everybody in person and, and get past these difficult times we, you know we've been dealt a, a rough hand but we got a lot of great things going here and you know i was only in in indiana since february and then you know middle of march things you know kind of turned south on us but um I saw a lot in that month and, you know, really excited working with Mike again because he had told me about all the really great things that happened here. And, the, you know, I sit and watch Jessica's program and I, I know that there's states all across the country that would, you know, very envious of what we have. So while, while we've been dealing with a really rough time, I'm going to take the glasses half full and say, you know, we got some really great things coming ahead for us. And, um, you know, it's it's really nice to be back too. And I, I but I really want to make sure everybody knows I, I'm filling large shoes with um, replacing John. And you know, he's a friend of mine. Uh, he's a friend of a lot of people on this phone call, and put in a lot of great years here. And you know, I certainly recognize that had something really awful, you know, not transpired with John, you know, I wouldn't be here. And but I, as it is, things do move on, and. Um, you know, I get back to work with some people that I've known. You know, you mentioned it, Chairman Borst. I was here in the mid '90s as a quite young man working for Rick Moore, Rick Moore mm -hmm. and the OTB network, and I got to to know Ms. Pittman and Mr. Elmore was a colleague and still a friend of mine. So I'm kind of come back to it was exciting to be able to come back to the Midwest and uh, you know working for a great company and, and a great boss and Mike. So. Um, down the down the road, like I mentioned, I, I'm looking forward to meeting everybody. And uh, I know right now isn't the time, but uh, when it happens, uh, we're going to have a great year once we can get rolling and look forward to some of the things. I can tell you that you know just because we stopped um, some of our operations in the casino and the, the revenue, we didn't stop a lot of the projects. And uh, the place looks fantastic. You'll be you'll be very pleased when you are able to come out. Our paddock paver project is finished. Looks wonderful. Um, it should. It wasn't cheap. The uh, we installed barn uh, barn fans that that are massive. Uh, you know, M Mr. Martin will, I'm sure, testify to the fact that it's made an immediate difference in the quarter horse barn. And you know, these are things that we have a little bit of luxury to with some capital requirements and whatnot that I I can tell you in other states they're not always that lucky. So I, I'm going back to the the optimistic side and say we're looking good. And the last thing I'll say, we we didn't we've been a little bit on hold here on some stuff and we're trying to figure out purses and I think Jessica's just done a wonderful job. She's represented you very well when you're not all paying attention, believe me. And um but one of the things we were able to do was get in contact with Churchill Downs. And, you know, we've got a, an opportunity this year. Services Agency, upon your approval. 
Yeah, Hello. The third round of the reverse rules. Yep. I'm getting, Somehow uh, we have some background yeah, noise. Yes. Program, and so they were they worked with us in the entire program as a whole. I'm picking up here, but I can't seem to it's, tune uh, into Jessica, anything. It's Jessica about some. Sounds like a recording. I can't tell you that. If you are on the phone call, please make sure you mute your phone and you mute your your computer so we do not get the background noise. Thank you. It's the delay. Oh, okay. 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 Well, I probably that was probably my cue to, to stop talking and pass it along, but I, I will do want to let you know that we do have a remarkable opportunity this year. I'd call it a once in a lifetime because well, let's hope it is, but the, with the Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks being pushed to September, our stakes, the Indiana Derby and the Indiana Oaks have a, you know, just a fantastic opportunity to make an even bigger splash nationally. And um, we've worked well with Churchill Downs. We're, we're partners in a lot of things. Um, I've, I've worked for them as a company. I've got some some friends that still work there and we this year will be a part of their Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks points qualifying system which is a real feather in the cap for what you, what has happened here you know prior to my arrival um, so we, we've set a date for the Derby that we're still trying to finalize and make sure we're on the right time but uh, it's kind of along the theme of things going very well uh, the Indiana Derby is going to take on a different level of prominence this year and and should be something that we should all be proud of. So I'll stop there, Commissioner. All right. Well, thank you. And again, welcome. Hopefully you'll keep things rolling along as well as they have been. Uh, it's not much fun to, to, to get a job that way. We understand that, but you have to be prepared always. And I think Rick Moore is still a young man, so that means you're still a young man too. So there you go. Uh, next on our agenda is the Indiana Grand request for promotional takeout reduction on pick five wagering to stimulate wagering at off-track locations. Dina, excuse, you want to excuse, me. That one? excuse me, Mr. Chairman, we need to still vote to approve the list of uh, racing officials oh, for Indiana did. Grand. Oh, okay. I thought we did. I thought we'd already done that. Sorry, that All was right. just Hoosier Park. Okay. Let's um, go ahead and... Do we need a motion again? Oh. Move to approve the list of officials for Indiana Grand Racing. Second. Okay, now we'll go for roll call. And excuse me, sorry. We we also want to approve, we would like to approve the uh, um, executive director, the authority to approve changes to Indiana Grand's list as well. Correct. Uh, so in, I'm in my motion to include that. Second. All right, now we'll go to roll call. Thank you. Um, Chairman Borst? Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel? Aye. Commissioner Pillow? Aye. And Commissioner McCarty? Aye. Thank you. Great. Thank you. That's why we got you here to keep us honest. <laughs> uh, okay, now, Dina, do you want to take the Indiana Grand request for promotional takeout reduction? Sure, I'll be happy to do that. Um, and I'll let Eric chime in if he'd like to once I once I get done. Um, the 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 takeout reduction, um, the pick and bets are, are typically a, a pretty popular um, uh, wager. The betters are usually very aware of the higher takeouts um, because a lot of them pick five included is probably a 20 or 25 percent range. Um, by reducing the Indiana Grand Pick 5 takeout to 11.99, um, you know, that could become one of the most popular wagers uh, in, the, in the U.S. Um, with the takeout decreasing by almost 50 percent, uh, one would think that the tracks would see a decrease in profit, but I, in many cases, the expected loss doesn't occur simply because they have so many more people betting um, that type of wager. So more bettors will be tempted to place this, this type of wager due to more money being returned to the better and less to the track. And increased wagering, uh, <laughs> it leads to more money going to purses. So it sounds like a really good deal to me. Uh, Eric, if you'd like to chime in, that would be great. Okay, uh, thanks, 
Thanks, Dina. The, uh, I, I submitted this letter with the cooperation of the HMPA Court of Horse Group and the ITOBA. We think this is a real chance to gain some attention nationally. Um, we're talking about, we want to go out with a real splash and say we are the lowest take up, the most attractive pick five wager in the country. And by doing that, we're going to go with 11.99% takeout. The lowest I could find at any other racetrack in America was 12%. So we can, with straight face, tell everybody we've got the most attractive wager in the country. And, you know, the, the way the math works on this, uh, we don't take any reduction in what we are paid by somebody placing a wager out of state. So, um, the reduction in takeout is actually passed along to those that are not here at our racetrack. It's to around the country. Great. Okay. Well, that's great. That's, that's a good promotional tool. Any uh, questions by commission members? If not, we'll entertain a motion in a second. Move approval. I second. And moved and seconded. The roll call vote. Chairman Borst. Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel. Aye. Commissioner Pillow. Aye. And Commissioner McCarty. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Passes unanimously. Uh, next on the agenda is approval of our MTC certified split sample laboratories for 2020 and beyond pursuant to Indiana code. Uh, Dina, you want to take that one? Dina, you need to unmute your microphone, please. I've got, there we go. All right. We, we do this every, uh, every race meet. Um, we start off the year and we have uh, a group of uh, certified labs that we utilize. We have a primary lab, which this year is industrial laboratories, and then we have um, an assortment of split laboratories that will aid the commission and the horsemen in doing splits uh, and processing splits uh, should somebody um, have a positive and they, and they want to go that route. So there's a list of them that are accredited through the RMTC and that list is uh, attached here to your book. And um, we just ask that the commission uh, uh, approve all of those laboratories and then um, throughout the year uh, the um, the horsemen will have an op opportunity uh, to choose a lab uh, should they decide to send off a split. The other portion of this uh, document is the waiver for the split laboratory on cobalt because our primary laboratory obviously um, will be uh, processing that, but not all split laboratories um, are able to uh, do a metals type, um, uh, uh, um, forgive me, <laughs> they're not able to do a metals type test. And that's another division within their organization. So we've had to um, ask for a waiver pursuant to 71 IAC 8-4-3 and 8.5-3-3. So our two split labs for cobalt, cobalt, and there's only two of them, would be University of California Davis and the University of Kentucky. So um, I know it's a little bit confusing, but uh, there's not very many uh, um, labs out there that do cobalt. So we've had to limit the number of choices for that one. Any questions? Just, just a question in general, Dina. Mm -hmm. our, our was last year's experience pretty favorable? I know in in a number of years past, we had some problems with timing and so forth. Are things pretty smooth in the in the last racing I, season? For I think last racing season, our lab did a really good job. Um, we had some backlogs with hair testing, but that's a new uh, type of testing that we've introduced. And they are continuing to work through that process. And I believe this year, we're going to have um, better return. Um, it'll be less time for hair testing than it was previously, but the blood and urine has been pretty consistent. They've had some issues last year where they, um, on confirming, it took a little bit longer than normal, but all in all, I, I would report that it was a, they did a fine job last year. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, any questions, further questions, commission members? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll uh, need a uh, motion and a second. I'll move approval. And I will second. Great, uh, roll call vote. Noah, you're on mute. Makes it hard to do a roll call vote. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Chairman Borst. Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel. Aye. Commissioner Pillow. Aye. And Commissioner McCarty. Aye. Thank you. Great, that passes unanimously. Next on the agenda is just the review of commission rulings uh, from November 26, 19 through May 10th, 2020. Uh, no vote needs to be taken. Anybody have any questions or comments or anything we need to talk about? All right, then we move on to the next item on the agenda is consideration of Caesar's request to amend the 2020 CapEx for alternative 2020 purchases. Uh, Dina, you want to take that one? Uh, I have unmuted. Uh, the racetracks came uh, to me uh, shortly after the uh, start of the new year, and they had they wanted to uh, switch the, some of the items that they were um, required to replace through the CapEx, and uh, they they basically decided that there were some things that didn't need to be replaced yet. And there were other things that did need to be replaced. And basically what they've done is they've switched out some purchase, you know, purchasing new um, casino vans, shuttle vans for additional tractors and lawnmowers and things that will, you know, aid um, them in caring for the racetrack properties uh, on, on track and off track around the grounds. And I thought, as a matter of fact, they actually ended up spending or what they have here is spending more than what they required to spend. So I, I, I don't have any reason to, to, to not um, uh, recommend that you approve this. And if Rick Moore is on and he wants to discuss their particular request, I'd be happy to have him add to this. Thank you, Dean, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Yeah, really, with just the slight alterations on Hoosier Parks and here, uh, the uh, equipment that was originally spec'd out with you know, some mowers and some attachments, we've actually found, um, you know, I'll call better equipment, a uh, John Deere a mower and a Ventrec tractor, along with the attachments to go along with both those pieces of equipment that will actually do a, a better job for us and in a safer manner. So as, as Dina said, we're going to spend slightly more on the, uh, the switched out equipment, but we think it makes a lot of sense and uh, again, would appreciate your approval. Great. And then the, the next item on there was Indiana Grand had had some specific items that they wanted to switch out on their CapEx. And um, if if Eric is still on, he can speak to that. But they had um, they had swapped out some items to to purchase a generator for the track lighting and tote board um, uh, tote board additions. Uh, that was that was about a ninety thousand dollar addition right there. So, Eric, if you'd like to talk about what those two items will do for the for the race meet. Uh, yes, thanks, Ms. Pittman. The um, you hit it pretty well there. You know, the, in the approved capital plan of twenty twenty, we were scheduled to buy eight shuttles. Um, in review of that, we came to the conclusion that two of those shuttles were not were less than a year old and really not in need of replacement. It would have would have not been a prudent way to go about it. But as time went on, there's a couple other projects that came up that we think will be very good for our race meet. Um, our track superintendent, Roy Smith, feels like we're in the need for replacement of a couple generators for our racetrack lighting. Uh, some of that, the, the current ones are getting close to their their use date, their end date. Um, that's about $110,000 or $55,000 a piece. And then we also would like to upgrade our tote board uh, for a little bit better presentation with changing some of the electronic lights, the indicators, 
Uh, it will be a nice presentation when we have spectators back, and that's about a $90,000 project as well. So as Ms. Pittman mentioned, we're actually planning on spending a little bit more than we would have had we uh, stuck with the original uh, capital plan with the eight shuttles. Thank you. Great. Yes, thank you. It makes sense on both tracks to get things that are really needed and not just get things to get things. So that, that does look like pretty good swaps to me also. Anything further, Dina? No, sir. Okay. Any commission member have any questions for any of the three presenters? Hearing none, then we'll have a motion in a second. I would move to approve these proposed changes uh, to the purchasing plan. I'll, I'll second it. Great. Moved and seconded. We'll go to the roll call vote. Thank you. Chairman Borst? Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel? Aye. Commissioner Pillow? Aye. And Commissioner McCarty? Aye. Thank you. Great. Passes unanimously. Uh, the next one on the agenda is an amendment to TVG's SPMO license. Uh, Noah, you want to take that one? Yes, thank you. Commissioners, TVG requests approval of an amendment to the advanced deposit wagering operation plan for the secondary paramutual organization license granted to ODS Technologies doing business as TVG Network for calendar year 2020. TBG has requested the ability to amend its initial SPMO application as they would like to create a new entity known as FanDuel Racing. The goal of FanDuel Racing is to build interest in the racing product through a brand name that people are familiar with. The back end of the FanDuel Racing is under complete control of TVG, and there have not been any changes to the behind the scenes operation presented to the commission. However, the new FanDuel racing product represents a material change to the TBG SPMO license application and therefore must be approved by the commission. At this time, staff re respectfully request your approval of this item. Thank you. Yeah, it makes sense. I think we all know who FanDuel is now, that's for sure. So it makes sense they get that name out there. Any questions, committee member or commission members? Uh, okay, do we have a motion and a second? Move approval. I second it. Been moved and seconded. We'll go for our roll call vote. Thank you. Chairman Borst? Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel? Aye. Commissioner Pillow? Aye. Commissioner McCarty? Aye. Thank you. Great. Um, next on the agenda is review and consideration of a 2020 secondary paramutual organization license for Penn ADW LLC, which is a subsidiary, subsidiary of Penn National Gaming Inc. No, I think that would be you again. Yes, thank you. Commissioner staff has undertaken a review of the PIN ADW SPMO application. We have, con we have contracted with the Thoroughbred Racing Protective Bureau to review daily wagering data provided by each SPMO. Commission staff has al also been in close contact with the Oregon Racing Commission, which has set itself up as a foremost authority on ADW operations including conducting yearly audits and maintaining strict licensure requirements for each SPMO. With that said, Penn ADW is considered to be in good standing with the Oregon Racing Commission and having have completed their annual audit and scheduled their next audit. At this time, commission staff would respectfully request approval of Penn ADW's application before the commission. Thank you. Any question by committed commission members? Is the uh, only one, Noah, does that, if we approve this today, then they, their authorization is immediate? 
Uh, yes, sir. And we've actually granted a, a probationary license, much like we did with the original SPMO group that you uh, uh, took in December um, to allow them to begin operating. Although, obviously, with uh, things going as they have, I don't know that there's been a lot of operation. But uh, yes, they would be authorized to, to uh, as a full licensee immediately upon your approval. OK, thank you. Thank you. Great. Any motion in a second? I'll move approval. I second it. All right. I'll go to roll call vote. Chairman Borst. Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel. Aye. Commissioner Pillow. Aye. Commissioner McCarty. Aye. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, next on the agenda is consideration of Indiana Grand's request for modification of previously approved live racing dates for 2020 pursuant to Indiana code, and obviously due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Noah, is that you? Yes, I can do that one, thank you. Commissioners, you originally approved Indiana Grand's requested race dates as part of the operational plan at the December 3rd, 2019 meeting. As you know, the world has changed dramatically since then. And as a result of the late start to the racing season, Indiana Grand has requested a change in approved race dates for 2020 due to the effects of COVID-19. The requested change is under agenda item 16 in your book and the commission staff would respectfully request your approval at this time. Thank you. Any questions, commission members? It's a shame we have to have reduced dates, but that's the way it is. No questions. We'll entertain a motion in a second. Move approval. I second it. Been moved and seconded. We'll go to roll call vote. Chairman Borst. Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel. Aye. Commissioner Pillow. Aye. Commissioner McCarty. Aye. Thank you. Great, it passes unanimously also. And the next one is consideration of Hoosier Park's request for modification of previously approved live racing dates for 2020. Same reason. Chairman Morse. Aye. Vice Chairman. Hello. Thank you. Like Indiana Grand, Hoosier Park has also lost a number of race days that were previously approved by the commission. In an effort to put together a calendar for the remainder of the season, Hoosier Park has requested a change in the approved race dates for 2020. The requested change is under agenda item 17 in your book and we would respectfully request approval at this time. Any commissioners questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to, for passage in a second. I move to approve the revised schedule of race day for your part. Second. And moved and seconded. We'll go to roll call vote. Chairman Borst. Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel. Aye. Commissioner Pillow. Aye. And Commissioner McCarty. Aye. Thank you. Great. Passes unanimously. Um, Next on the agenda is the request of the Indiana Horse Racing Commission to delegate authority to approve any 2020 race matters prior to the next commission meeting to Executive <coughs> Director Pittman pursuant to Indiana Code, kind of a cleanup thing to, to be make us be a little more nimble since we don't know when we're going to have another meeting. We've yes, this thank, you. thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, or commissioners and Mr. Chairman, race matters often come up between the commission meetings that need to be resolved before the next scheduled meeting. In order to maintain flexibility to work with the horsemen and ra racetrack teams, it is sometimes necessary for the executive director to make decisions that may require action prior to the next 
scheduled meeting. Therefore, Commission staff respectfully requests the Executive Director be delegated the authority to approve any 2020 race matters that are submitted. Any commissioners with questions or comments? Do we actually have to approve this since it's already authorized under statute or do you need a motion? I think statute. Yeah, I think we do. Yes. Yeah, okay. Then I would move I would move approval on this. I second. Great. Been moved and seconded. We'll go to a roll call vote. Thank you. Chairman Borst. Aye. Vice Chairman Schenkel. Aye. Commissioner Pillow. Aye. And Commissioner McCarty. Aye. Thank you. Great. Great. Uh, do we have any old business? I don't think there is. How about any new business? Uh, Chairman, I have something that I, I wanted to to talk to um, all of our Indiana horsemen about and um, if you could indulge me possibly. You're indulged. Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> horse racing has been experiencing some difficult times these past years. Uh, because of this, I think the industry collectively has come to the realization that horse welfare and safety should be a top priority in racing. Uh, I know there's been a lot of press out there about this. Uh, if we have measures in place to accomplish that, we should also be accomplishing the same for the riders. One of the many ways we can accomplish this is through medication reform and regulation. The ARCI, who is the uh, Trade, the Racing's Trade Association, it's the National Association, has adopted tougher model rules on NSAIDs, which is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, and interarticular joint injections and kept open the possibility for further limits on phenobutazone. The association also approved in principle dramatically increasing sanctions for violations considered to be doping and equine endangerment. Um, now, they have not gone forward with that yet. It's pending further work on regulatory definitions and rule drafting. And enter articular. Thank you. A final recommendation was to come in time for their April annual meeting. However, with the arrival of COVID-19, I don't, I'm unsure of the status of that proposal at this time. Commission staff met with Indiana HBPA Itoba and Quarter Horse Racing of Indiana at Indiana Grand on February 21st and had a similar meeting at Hoosier Park on February 26th with the ISA to begin a dialogue regarding these rules that will be coming down the pike. These are the type of rule changes that will cause some trainers and veterinarians to modify the way they currently do business. I simply want to make sure that we don't end up in a gotcha environment uh, with the horsemen. I want to make sure everyone is aware these rules are coming and recommend that they meet with their vets to discuss what adjustments need to be made to keep them from running afoul of the regulations when they are eventually implemented. Taking that into consideration, my recommendation has been to begin the dialogue in a slow and methodical manner. We have already begun that process by meeting with the horsemen's associations in February. Our next step will be to to post the rules on our website and add those same rules periodically to our monthly newsletters as an additional outreach op excuse me outreach option to keep everyone in the industry thinking about it we will ask for industry feedback by late summer and ask the commission to consider the proposed rules at the fall or end of the year 2020 commission meeting so i just wanted to put this out there let everyone know that these rules are going to start popping up. They'll be uh, posted to our website. We'll be including them in our monthly newsletters to the breeds, and um, then they will become um, a, an agenda item uh, eventually towards the summer and the fall uh, for, for voting before the end of the year implementation early 2021. Great. Well, that's the way to do it, to take our time and let everybody have some input. So that's everybody will have their chance to put their two cents in right um well it's probably not new business i got a couple different things two or three things to say first of all again i apologize profusely for being late and 
I'm sitting here watching you guys on uh, the screen and listening on the phone, so at least I can see what's up there. Um, I even combed my hair and put a clean shirt on for this, and gosh, I wasted that, I guess. Um, secondly, there have been some phone calls and contacts from some of the horse owners about not being allowed on the back side of the track uh, for the the racing to start. And while we always feel for everybody for that, we're, this is new territory and we're just trying to keep the amount of people down back there to to make this as safe as possible. And, and I'll tell you that Dina has worked hard with the governor's office and with the track officials and the staff to, to make this even possible for legally starting July or June 14th. So we apologize, but hopefully if everything goes well by July 4th, things should be open and we'll see whether we're, how many spectators are allowed and that type of thing, but at least we're, we're making some progress. So we just have to hold on until we get to, to the July 4th time. Uh, and finally, again, thank you to Dina and Jessica and Megan for making all this happen here today. Uh, the rest of the staff that helped also. It's just uh, a Herculean effort that take to get this done. And uh, we got it done. And our whole goal is to get horse racing as quickly and safely as possible started again in Indiana. And that's been our only goal here all these months. So we thank the tracks also and the horsemen or associations for working hard on this and trying times. But you know what? We're in Indiana. And we're going to make it work. We're the best there is. Any other commissioner comments for the good? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is Commissioner McCarty. I, I want to thank the staff for the tremendous effort they made to make this possible, especially I know they suffered through several hours with me and I want to thank them. In light of the fact that this could potentially happen again, and I know we're all excited for another virtual meeting, um, I will be speaking <laughs> I'll be speaking to my lighting director because my visual here, look, I kind of look like Darth Vader with a white hair hat on. So we're going to put lighting. And I'm also going to talk to our set designer, my set designer, because I'm comparing my background with Commissioner Schinkel's and he just looks better and more homey. And so I got a lot of work to do with my staff. Uh, yeah, but you look good in that blue blazer. I didn't yeah. wear my blazer. I, I did get wrapped up this, like the chairman did. So uh, I'll be working on, on our set. And, uh, and I'm also going to talk to our set. And we'll try to do a better I'm job. Because I'm comparing my background with commissioners. Well, I, I can see you now and you look fine. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Mr. Yeah, I can too. You look fine, Bill. You're okay. Yeah. At least your assistant got you on. I, I'm, I'm a failure on that one. <laughs> All righty. If there's no other further comment, then I thank everybody who's watching and listening. And uh, if you have anybody has any comments, obviously about any of this, feel free to contact the commission staff and commission also. With that, I'll declare us adjourned. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you. Stay well and healthy. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for our meeting. We hope you all stay safe, stay healthy, and we hope to see you on the track soon.